What's going on guys? Today I'm going to be showing you how to make this glass cup in Blender. I'm on version 2.76b, which is at this time the most up-to-date version, so make sure that you've updated before getting started. Okay, so when we open up Blender we see the finished project here. Uh, not quite as impressive as the finished image, but this is what it looks like without all of the uh, materials and lighting and everything on it. So I'm going to be showing you the basics of how to model this cup here um, and we'll add in the lights and the plane and get the camera positioned in just the way that we want it. So to get started we'll go ahead and open up a new layer here. Hit shift A to add in a new circle. Hit 1 to go into front view. Hit tab to go into edit mode. And then hit E Z. That'll extrude it down on the Z axis. So we'll just extrude it a little bit here first. Hit E, Z again. Go down a little bit more. E, Z again. And we'll do that one more time. Okay, now hit S to scale this out. Hit E again to extrude on the Z axis. Easy again. About right there. And then just hit S to scale it in. And hit F to close that face. Okay, go back into front view by hitting 1. And we'll drag this up a little bit to make it a little flatter. Come back up here and hit Alt, right click to select that whole row. And then we're going to extrude it up this time. We'll extrude it a couple times here. Okay, so let's select this row right here. So hit Alt, right click, and we'll just scale it in a little bit. Same thing here, except we're going to move this down. Scale that in a bit as well. And we'll move this one down a little bit too. And scale that in. Let's move these out just a little bit. Okay. Hit Alt to select this row, and then hit Shift to select that row as well. Oops, we don't want the vertical. Sometimes it selects the vertical. If it does that, just keep clicking around until you get the horizontal row. So we'll hit S to scale this in just a little bit. this row as well and we'll move this row down if you want to select a lot of points at once then hit B and then just left click and drag and it'll select all of those all right there looks nice Now we want another uh, row to be right here to give us a little more breathing room when we're modeling. So let's go ahead and hit Control R to add a loop cut. Left click and then we'll just move it down here and left click again. Let's scale this row out just a little bit. Oops as well as this one. And these as well. Alright, so there's the basic look of our cup. It doesn't look exactly like the other one. 
uh, we can go ahead and scale that down a little bit to match um, but yeah it looks it looks kind of rough but this is just a tutorial so you can kind of play around with it and get it to look exactly the way you want um, whenever you do it so let's go back into edit mode by hitting tab and now what we're going to do is essentially just re-sculpt uh, this cup and the reason being is for whenever we add the material later uh, it's just going to fit onto the model easier because it's going to have more surface area to work with so let's go back into the front view or actually first let's do up here so alt right click to select this row E to extrude and just left click right there and then we'll size it in just a little bit to kind of create the lip of the cup there and we can move it down slightly now we go back into front view by hitting 1 hit Z to go into wireframe and E Z to extrude and we're just gonna match up these lines here all the way down hit S to scale that in Okay, so now that we've sculpted the inside of the cup, we can start applying the materials. So let's go ahead and come over here and hit smooth shading. That looks a little bit better. Now we're going to come over to the materials tab. Give it a new material. And we'll just name this glass. And then come down to the surface panel right here and give it a glass BDSF shader. Let's go into the camera, hit N to bring up this panel, and lock camera to view. That way whenever we scroll around, the camera will follow wherever we go. Okay, so right about there looks good. We'll uncheck that and hit N to make that panel go away. And let's go ahead and go into rendered view and take a look. So as you can see, it's not really looking that good right now. We don't have any lights. We don't have a background. So let's go ahead and add those in. We'll go back to solid view and hit shift A to add in a new plane. Go out of camera there. Hit S to scale it up. About the size of the grid would be fine. And we'll move the cup up so it sits on top of the plane. Now I don't want the background to just be black, so we'll click on the plane that we just created, hit tab to go into edit mode, and select these three points right here. Hit E, Z to extrude up on the Z axis, and there's our wall. So we'll bring this back up, reposition the camera here a little bit. All right, and if we need to scale this up, we can just by hitting S, so now it fills the camera. And we'll go ahead and give the plane a new material as well. We'll just call this plane. We can just leave this surface as a diffuse shader, but you can give it whatever color you like. We'll just go with We'll just kind of leave it at gray. So if we go back into rendered view, we see that it's kind of looking worse actually. So now what we need to do is add in some lights. So we'll hit shift A and add in another plane. Go ahead and bring that up, scale it up just a little bit and hit R to rotate it and X for the X axis. Rotate it so it's pointing about like that our X again to rotate and we'll add in a couple more lights so hit shift D to duplicate it and move it about over here
make sure that they're all pointing at the cup here. R, Z to rotate on the Z axis. And okay, hit zero to go back into the camera view. And if we hit rendered, we notice that there are not any lights and that we can also see all of these planes. So what we need to do is we'll select a plane here, give it a new material, come down to surface and give it an emission shader. So that is where the light comes into play. In order to do this, we need to make sure that we are in cycles render. So if you haven't already changed it to that, make sure that you're not in Blender, not in game. Make sure you're in Cycles Render. That's the only way that we're going to get these uh, objects to emit light. So we'll go ahead and give these other planes the same material. Oop. We'll just go ahead and name this Light. And then we'll click on this and just give it the same material. Oops, not glass. There we go. So now, whenever we make a change to one of these lights, since they all have the same material, it will make the same changes to all of them. So if we change this to red, then it makes all the lights red. So if you want, oops, go ahead and undo that. So if you want all of your lights to be different, like you say you want this one to have a strength of five, but you want these other two to have a strength of one, then you're going to need to give this one a different material. So the next thing we notice is that we can still see the lights. In some cases, that's good, you want to see the lights, but in this case, we don't want to see the lights. So, how do we fix that? Well, the way you fix it is just select one of the planes, come over to this panel with the little cube, come down to Cycles Settings, and find Ray Visibility, and uncheck Camera. Oop, and we selected the wrong plane there, we want the light. Let's go ahead and exit out of that. Go back into solid view and we'll select this and hit camera. Do the same for these other two as well. And make sure that we can see that. Okay. There we go. Now you can't see the lights in the scene. So that's a good tip there. If you want something to not be visible, like say lights in your scene, then just come over to this panel right here, come down to Cycles Settings, and find Ray Visibility, and just click Camera. And then you won't be able to see it in the scene. So our glass is looking a little bit better, but the scene still looks kind of dull. So let's go ahead and turn up the intensity of the lights a little bit. And we'll change the color of our plane. If you just want it to go back to the default white, then make sure all of these are 0.8. Okay, so our glass is looking a little lackluster, so let's select it and we'll give it a slight blue tint or green, whatever color we want. All right, that looks a little better. This scene is pretty noisy. You have all these little grains here, all these little bits of noise. Um, the way to get rid of that is to come back over to the render panel, come down to where it says sampling, and just change the preview to zero. That way, up here, you can see the path tracing samples. Um, it will just keep counting up infinitely until you get a nice look. So in order to kind of find uh, the right number of samples that you need, I would suggest just letting it kind of run up until it gets to, which it's going pretty slow right now, so we won't sit through all of them, uh, but let it count up until it gets to a good number where you're not getting a lot of this noise. And then when you're ready to render it out, come over to where it says render, and then just change it to whatever number that is. Normally you're going to need a lot of samples in order for it to not look very, very noisy. Um, so just be prepared to wait a little while on that. So that's pretty much the basics of how I created this glass. It still looks a little rough, like I said, but this is just a tutorial. So you can uh, refine it and make it look better the way that you want to. 
Uh, we could add a couple more lights in here to kind of brighten it up. We can kind of tweak the IOR to give it a little bit of a different look. We can make it a little clearer. We can reposition the camera to make it look a little more 3D. That looks better. And one more thing before I forget to mention it is you can just see that it's rendering things inside the camera. So that saves time on the samples, which I forgot to turn it back to 10 here. We'll go ahead and do that so it's not just eating up a bunch of time. So if you want to do that, then come over to the render tab here. Go ahead and get rid of that panel by clicking N. Come over to the render tab, find dimensions, and click border. See, now it's rendering everything in the scene. So even if we go out of camera view, then it's rendering everything. So we just want it to render inside the camera so that it saves render time and helps it go faster. Now let's talk about rendering real quick. If you want to render it out as just a still image, no animation, if you don't want to sit and wait for hours waiting for just a couple seconds, um, then you can come down here to the start and end frames and just have it start and end at one. So it will only render just one frame and not the normal 250 that it starts out as. And normally while we're working, we can just turn the resolution down to about 50%, which also saves on the preview render time. But before you uh, render it out completely, make sure it's turned up to 100%, and the resolution, I normally just set it at 1920 to, by 1080. And my best advice for rendering is to not render it out as a movie format because you'll be tempted to probably if you're creating a video of the animation you'll think uh, oh we can save it as H.264 that'll be good or save it as AVI and then it'll just be a movie when it's done well yes but if your computer crashes or if blender crashes which sometimes happens um, especially during long renders then you're going to lose all of your progress and you're going to have to start all over. You won't lose the whole project, you'll just have to start the render over. So my advice, what I've learned from watching other tutorials and just from doing this myself, um, is to render it as an image format. Normally either JPEG or PNG. PNG I've found gets a little bit better quality. Uh, sometimes you can't tell the difference but I just like to use uh, PNG. So when you're ready to save it, come up here to File and click Save As, which I've already done, and then come over here to the Output and click on the little folder, and then just select where you want to save it. So I'll save it here, and then you can name it right here, and then just hit Enter, hit Accept, and now that you've got everything set, you've got your location, you've got all the settings correct, you come up here to render animation and just click that and then let it render. So like I said uh, that image was very very grainy very noisy be sure that you have your render samples turned up to probably a pretty high number uh, just let it go like I said hit zero on here and let it go count up until you find something that looks decent um, and then change your render samples to that number and then you can render it. So that's about it guys. Pretty basic, nothing super fancy. Um, I hope that you found this tutorial helpful. If you did, then leave a like. If I missed anything or accidentally skipped over something or just something was unclear, then please leave a comment down below and I will try to clear that up for you. So thank you guys for watching. Uh, be sure to subscribe for more videos and I will see you in the next one.